Chapters 7 through 12 of the Book of Joshua from the Holy Bible in Modern English. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Holy Bible in Modern English, translated by Ferrar Fenton. The Book of Joshua, Chapters 7 through 12. Chapter 7 But the children of Israel were faithless, faithless about the devoted property. And Achan, the descendant of Carmi, the descendant of Zabdi, the son of Zarak, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the devoted, and the anger of the ever-living burnt at the children of Israel. Joshua then sent men from Jericho to Ai, which was near beth to the east of Bethel, and instructed them, Go and examine the country. So the men went and spied about the country of Ai, and returned to Joshua, and said to him, it is not necessary for all the people to go up. Only two or three thousand men need go to capture Ai. All the people need not march there, for it is small. So about three thousand men of the troops went up. But they fled before the men of Ai, and the men of Ai killed about thirty-six persons, and drove them from before their gates to Shabarim, and defeated them at Morad, so that the heart of the people melted and became like water. Joshua consequently tore his robes and fell upon his face to the earth before the ark of the ever-living until the dusk. He and the judges of Israel also threw dust on their heads. And Joshua exclaimed, Ah, uh, Lord of life, why have you brought the people over the Jordan to give us to the hand of the Amorites to destroy us when we would have been content to remain on the other side of the torrent? For myself, Almighty, what can I say when Israel turns to flight before its enemies, when all the Canaanites and the population of the country hear it, and surround us, and cut off our name from the earth? Who will then make your name great? But the ever-living replied to Joshua, Arouse yourself! Why are you fallen on your face? Israel has sinned, and has broken the covenant I commanded them, and have taken from the devoted property, and plundered it, and hidden it, and put it amongst the baggage. Therefore the sons of Israel were not able to stand before their enemies. They fled before the faces of their enemies, because there is sacred property with them. Let it not continue with them, if they would not be destroyed by the sacred property amongst you. Arise, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow, for thus says the ever-living God of Israel, There is sacred property in your breast, Israel. You will not be able to stand before your enemies until you have cast out the sacred things from your breast. Therefore let them approach in the morning by tribes and families, and the tribe that is intercepted by the ever-living, let it approach by families, and the family that is intercepted by the ever-living, let it approach by houses, and the house that is intercepted by the ever-living, let it approach by individuals, and he who is intercepted shall be burnt in fire with all belonging to him, for he has broken the covenant of the ever-living, and whoever has done it shall be destroyed from Israel." Joshua accordingly arose at daybreak, and Israel marched past by its tribes, and the tribe of Judah was intercepted. Then the families of Judah approached, and the families of the Zarakites were intercepted. Then the family of Zarak approached by houses, and Zabdi was intercepted. Then the house of Zabdi approached by individuals, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zarak of the tribe of Judah, was intercepted. Joshua then said to Achan, my son, return thanks now to the ever-living God of Israel, and giving thanks to him, confess, I pray, to me what you have done. Hide it not from me. So Achan answered Joshua and said, I have certainly sinned against the ever-living God of Israel, and I have done like this, and like this, when I saw a cloak of Shinar, peculiarly beautiful, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, I desired and took them, and hid them in a box in my tent, and the silver is in it. Joshua therefore sent messengers who ran to the tent, and saw the box in the tent and the money in it. So they took it from within the tent and brought it to Joshua, and to all the sons of Israel, and they poured it out before the ever-living. Then Joshua took Achan the son of Zarak, and the money, and cloak, and the wedge of gold, and his sons and daughters, and his cattle and asses, and his sheep, and his tent, 
and all that he had and all the forces of israel with him took them to the valley of sorrow where joshua said why to our sorrow did you grieve the ever-living at this time then all israel slew them with stones and burnt them with fire and covered them up with stones and piled upon them a great heap of stones to this day thus the ever-living turned away his anger therefore they call the name of that place the vale of sorrow to the present time chapter eight then the ever-living said to joshua fear not and do not delay to take all the forces with you to the war but advance upon ai for i will give the king of ai to your hand with his people and city and land when you shall do to ai and her king as you did to jericho and her king except that you may plunder the booty for yourselves place an ambush behind the town joshua and all the forces consequently advanced to the war ascending to ai joshua however selected thirty thousand men the best of the army and sent them by night instructing them thus be careful to lie in ambush behind the town not very far from the city and all of you be steady while i and the main body of the forces with me will advance to the town and when they come to oppose us as formerly we will retreat before them so that they may follow after us till we separate them from the city for they will say we are driving them before us as we formerly drove them before us then you must rise up from the ambush and rush into the town for your ever-living god will give it to your hand but when you have seized the place set the city on fire as the ever-living commands you to do mind i have instructed you joshua dispatched them thus and they went to the ambuscade and halted there between bethel and ai to the west of ai but joshua remained that night in the midst of the forces joshua however arose at daybreak and brigaded the army and he and the officers of israel advanced against ai and the whole body of the army that was with him advanced and approached and came near to the city to assail ai from the north now there was a valley between them and ai he had previously taken about five thousand men and placed them in ambush between bethel and ai on the west of the town thus the main body of the army rested on the north of the town with its ambuscade at the west of the city whilst joshua marched by night through the valley but when the king of ai perceived it he hastened and arose and the man came out of ai to oppose israel in battle with all his forces in the open plain but he knew not of the ambush behind the city joshua and his israelite army however retreated before them and retired towards the desert then all the people who were in the town shouted to run after them so they ran after joshua and separated themselves from the city and there was not a man left in ai and bethel who did not go out after israel thus they left the city unguarded to chase after israel then the ever-living said to joshua extend the javelin that is in your hand towards ai for i will give it into your power so joshua extended the javelin which was in his hand to the city and the ambush arose immediately from its place and ran with outstretched hand to the town and captured it and instantly fired the city then the men of ai turned and looked and saw the smoke go up from the city to the sky and that there was no direction in which they could fly one way or the other so our forces retreating to the desert turned from their retreat when joshua and the israelite army saw that the ambuscaders had captured the city because the smoke went up from the town they turned and charged on to the men of ai and the others came out from the city to attack them thus they were with israel on both sides front and rear and they fought until only a remnant fled and escaped but the king of ai was taken alive and brought to joshua and when israel had finished slaying all the people of ai in the field of the desert to which they had fled and all had fallen to death by the edge of the sword the army of israel turned back to ai and struck it with the edge of the sword and the number who fell on that day of men and women were twelve thousand all people of ai for joshua did not withdraw his hand with the extended javelin until they had destroyed all the population of ai however the cattle and the furniture of the town israel plundered for themselves as the ever-living had said when he instructed joshua joshua also burnt ai and made it a ruin forever as it is to this day 
and he hung the king of Ai on a tree until the dusk. But when the sun went down, Joshua commanded, and they lowered the corpse from the tree, and laid it at the open gate of the city, and piled upon it a great heap of stones. They remain to this day. Afterwards Joshua built an altar to the ever-living God of Israel on Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the ever-living commanded the children of Israel, and such as Moses described in the book of the law for the children of Israel, of whole stones, to which no chisel had been applied. And he offered upon it a burnt offering to the ever-living, and sacrificed a thank-offering. He also carved upon the stones there a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote for the sons of Israel. Then the army of Israel, and the senators, and officers, and judges, stood on each side of the ark, next to the priests and Levites, who carried the ark of the covenant of the Lord, together with the foreigners and natives, on Mount Gerizim, and half on Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the ever-living commanded, to bless the nation of Israel at the start. After that he read the whole of the law of blessing and cursing, with all that was written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded which Joshua did not read before all the parliament of Israel, with the men and children, and the foreigners who marched with them. CHAPTER Nine. When all the kings who were beyond the Jordan, in the hills, and on the slopes, and on the shore of the great sea opposite Lebanon, of the Hittites, and the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, Hivites, and the Jebusites, heard it, they allied together for war with Joshua and Israel. The inhabitants of Gibeon also heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, but they acted with cunning, and went and took worn saddles on their asses, and old wineskins broken and patched, and old patched shoes on their feet, and worn clothes upon them, and all their bread and provisions were moldy. They came thus to Joshua in the camp at Gilgal, and said to him and to the princes of Israel, we have come from a distant country, and wish you to make a treaty with us. But the leader of Israel replied, Do you reside amongst the Hivites? If so, I cannot make a treaty with you. They, however, answered Joshua, We are your servants. When Joshua inquired, Who are you, and whence do you come? They answered, Your servants come from a very distant country. To the name of your ever-living God, for we have heard what he has done, all that he did in Mitzrayim, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon king of Heshbon, and to Og king of Bashan who was in Ashtaroth. So all the chiefs and people of our country commanded us to take provisions for our journey, and go to meet you, and say, We are your servants, therefore make a treaty with us. We consequently prepared new biscuits at our homes on the day we began to travel to you, and now see they are bad and moldy, and these wineskins were new when we filled them, and now they are broken, and these clothes and shoes of ours are worn out from the great length of the journey. So they accepted the men from their provisions, and did not inquire of the mouth of the ever-living." Joshua therefore made peace with them, and concluded a treaty to preserve their lives, and the chiefs of the parliament swore it to them. But at the end of the three days after they had made the treaty with them, they learnt they were neighbors who resided in the vicinity. For the children of Israel marched and came to their towns on the third day, the villages of Gibeon, Kaphira, and Baroth, and Kirzath of the woods, but the sons of Israel did not strike them, because the lords of Parliament had sworn to them by the ever-living God of Israel. All the public, however, complained of these lords, but they replied, All we, the lords of the Parliament, swore to them by the ever-living God of Israel, so you cannot now injure them. Do this, however, and let them live, that there may not be anger upon us because of the oath which we have sworn to them. The lords therefore said to them, You shall live but you shall be hewers of wood and drawers of water to all the parliament as the lords promised you. Joshua consequently summoned them and addressed them thus, Why did you deceive us, asserting we are from a very great distance when you reside in the vicinity? However, since you have deceived, and the result cannot be taken from you, you shall be hewers of wood and drawers of water to the house of the ever-living. They, however, answered Joshua and said, 
because it was clear to your servants that your ever-living god had promised to his servant moses to give all this country to you and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land before you we feared greatly for our lives in your presence therefore we did this and now we are in your hand for good do with us what is right in your eyes to do so he showed kindness to them and protected them from the hands of the children of israel that they should not kill them but joshua gave them at the same time to be hewers of wood and drawers of water for the parliament and for the altar of the ever-living to this day at the place which might be chosen chapter ten but when adonai zedek king of jerusalem heard that joshua had captured ai and had burnt it and as he had done to jericho and her king so he had done to ai and her king and that the inhabitants of gibeon had made peace with the children of israel as they were approaching them he feared much for gibeon was a great city like one of the capital cities because it was larger than ai and all its leaders were brave adonai zedek the king of jerusalem consequently sent to hoham king of hebron and to piram king of yarmouth and to japhiah king of lachish and to debir king of aglon saying come to me and help me and we will attack gibeon for it has made peace with joshua and the children of israel they assembled in consequence and the five kings of the amorites the king of jerusalem the king of hebron the king of yarmouth the king of lachish the king of aglon they and all their forces encamped against gibeon and made war upon it but the men of gibeon sent to joshua at the camp in gilgal saying drop not your hands from your servants come immediately to us to save us and help us for all the kings of the emorites in the hills have collected against us so joshua ascended from gilgal he and all the army with him and all the generals of the forces the ever-living also said to joshua fear not for them for i have given them into your hand not a man shall stand before you so joshua came upon them suddenly marching all night from gilgal and the ever-living defeated them before israel and routed them with a great rout from gibeon and pursued them towards the ascent of beth horon and defeated them at azraka and at Machdah. and as they fled before israel in the plain of beth horon the ever-living sent great stones upon them from the skies at azraka and more were killed by the stones that hailed down than the children of israel slew with the sword joshua also called to the ever-living on that day jehovah give the amorites to the face of the children of israel and he added sun in the eyes of israel be still at gibeon and moon in the valley of ilan and the sun and moon stood still till the nation had mastered its foes is not this recorded in the true records that the sun stood still in the mid-sky and hastened not to set for about a full day and there has not been such an event before it or since it for the ever-living to listen to the voice of a man but the ever-living fought for israel joshua and the forces of israel afterwards returned to the camp at gilgal but those five kings retreated and hid themselves in a cave at Makeda, and it was reported to joshua the five kings have been found concealed in a cave in Makeda." so joshua said roll great stones to the mouth of the cave and place a guard of men over it to watch it but you others stop not following your enemies and cut off their rear do not attack their towns for the ever-living god will give them to your hand so when joshua and the sons of israel had completed the conquest of them by absolute defeat and the raiders had raided them then they attacked the fortified cities and afterwards all the force returned to joshua at the camp of Makeda in peace and no man sharpened his tongue against the children of israel after that joshua commanded to open the mouth of the cave and they did so and to bring out those five kings from the cave to him they did so and brought the five kings to him the king of jerusalem the king of hebron the king of yarmouth the king of lachish the king of aglon and when the kings were brought out to joshua joshua summoned all the leaders of israel and ordered the commanding officers of the army to approach and put their feet upon their necks joshua also addressed them saying fear not and let not your courage fail for the ever-living will do thus to all your enemies when you fight with them and after that joshua degraded them and hung them on five trees and they hung upon the trees until the dusk but when the time of sunset came 
Joshua commanded, and they were lowered from the trees, and laid in the cave where they had concealed themselves, and they piled great stones at the mouth of the cave. They remain to this day. At the same period Joshua captured Makeda, and he devoted its territory and all its population he spared not from ruin, but did to the king of Makeda as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua afterwards advanced with the forces of Israel from Makeda to Libna, and besieged Libna, and the ever-living also gave that into the hand of Israel with its territory, and he struck with the edge of the sword all the persons in it. He did not reserve it from plunder, and did to its king as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua next advanced, and the forces of Israel with him, from Libna to Lachish, and encamped against and besieged it. And the ever-living gave Lachish into the power of Israel, and they captured it on the second day, and gave no quarter to the people in it, exactly as to Libna. At this period Horam the king of Gezar advanced to help Lachish, but Joshua defeated him, and the people with him, until nothing but a wreck was left. Joshua and the army of Israel with him next advanced from Lachish to Aglon, and encamped against and assaulted and captured it at once, and gave no quarter to all the men in it. At the same time he devoted them as he had done to Lachish. Afterwards Joshua and the forces of Israel with him marched from Aglon to Hebron, and besieged and captured it, and gave no quarter to all the garrison in it. He did not reserve it from ruin, exactly as he had done to Aglon, but devoted it and all the garrisons in it. Next, Joshua and all the Israelite forces with him turned towards Dibra, and besieged it, and captured it and its territory and all its towns, and gave no quarter, but devoted all the garrison who held it. They did not refrain from plunder. They did to Dibra as they did to Hebron and her king, and as they had done to Libna and its king. Joshua afterwards subjected all the country of the hills, and the desert, and the plains, and the farming country, and all their kings. He did not refrain from plunder, but he devoted all the animals, as the ever-living God of Israel ordered. Joshua afterwards subdued from Kadish Barna to Gaza, and all the land of Goshen as far as Gibeon, and all its districts, and the country around them, in one campaign, because the ever-living God of Israel fought for Israel. Joshua afterwards returned with all the Israelite force to the camp at Gilgal. Chapter 11 But when Jabin the king of Zor heard it, he sent to Yobab king of Madon, and the king of Shimron, and the king of Akshaf, and the kings who were to the north in the hills and in the pastures, to the south of Kinneroth, and in the grasslands, and in the marshes about the lake the Canaanites of the east and the west, and the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Jebusites in the hill, and the Hivites below Hermon in the land of Mizpah, who came and all their camps with them, a great army like the sand on the shore of the sea for number, with very many horses and chariots. So all these kings appointed a rendezvous, and came and encamped together at the lake of Miram to fight with Israel. Then the ever-living said to Joshua, Fear not for their presence, for by tomorrow at this time I will give them to be broken before Israel, hamstring their horses, and burn their chariots with fire. Then Joshua rapidly advanced, and all the forces of the people with him, to the lake of Miram, and fell upon them, and the ever-living gave them to the hand of Israel, who defeated and pursued them at Zidon the Great, and on the shore of the sea, and at the gorge of Mizpah on the east, where he defeated them until only a wreck was left. And Joshua did to them as the ever-living commanded him. He hamstrung their horses and burnt their chariots with fire. Joshua also turned in this campaign and captured Zor and conquered its king by the sword, for Zor was before that the head of all these chieftains. Therefore he gave no quarter to its garrison. He devoted all to the edge of the sword. He left not a breath, but burnt Zor with fire. And all the chieftains and all the districts around it Joshua captured and subdued them by the sword, devoting them as Moses the servant of the ever-living commanded. But the plunder of all these towns, and the cattle, the children of Israel looted for themselves, except that they put the men to the sword to destroy them. There remained none breathing. As the ever-living commanded to Moses his servant, so Moses commanded to Joshua, and so Joshua did. He did not reject a word that the ever-living commanded to Moses. 
Consequently, Joshua obtained permission of all the country of the hills, and all the south, and all the land of Goshen, and the slopes, and the desert, and the hill of Israel with its slopes, from the border hills to the ascent of Seir, and from Balgad to the gorge of Lebanon below the hill of Hermon. He captured and completely subdued the whole of their territories. Joshua was a long period making war against those districts. No city came peaceably to the children of Israel except the Hivites who inhabited Gibeon. The rest were taken by war. But this was from the ever-living, who emboldened their hearts to oppose Israel in war to devote them so that they might not find mercy, for they were to be destroyed as the ever-living commanded Moses. About the same period Joshua went and conquered the Anakim in the highlands, in Hebron, in Debir, in Anab, and in all the highlands of Judah and all the highlands of Israel, joshua devoted them with their cities he left none of the anakim in the country of the children of israel except they were left in azah in gath and ashdod thus joshua took possession in the way the ever-living commanded to moses after which joshua allotted to israel the districts for their tribes and the country rested from war chapter twelve now these are the kingdoms of the country which the children of Israel conquered, and seized their territories on the other side of Jordan towards the rising sun, from the river Arnon to Mount Hermon, and all the pastures to the east. Sihon, king of the Amorites, who resided in Heshbon, ruling from Aroar, which is on the banks of the river Arnon, and on an island in the river, and half of Gilead, as far as the river Yabok, which river bounds the Ammonites to the pastures on the lake of Kinneroth towards the east, and to the lake of the pastures, the salt lake, easterly, as far as Yashemoth and beth Imon, below the torrents of Pisgah. And the boundaries of Og, king of Bashan, were, from the border of the Rephaim, who resided in Ashtaroth and Adriai, who ruled in Mount Hermon, and in Salka, and in all Bashan, to the boundaries of the Gesherites, and the Machathai, and the half of Gilead, to the bounds of Sihon, king of Heshbon. Moses, the servant of the ever-living, and the children of Israel, conquered them, and Moses, the servant of the ever-living, gave them into the possession of the Reubenites, and Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. These, however, are the kingdoms of the country which Joshua and the children of Israel conquered on the west side of the Jordan, from Balgad, to the gorges of the Lebanon, and to the boundary hills of the ascent to Seir, and which Joshua gave to the tribes of Israel to possess in their divisions, on the hills, and the slopes, and on the pastures, and in the prairies, and in the desert, and in dry lands. The Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The king of Jericho, one. The king of Ai, who resided in Bethel, one. The king of Jerusalem, one. The king of Hebron, one. The king of Yarmouth, one. The king of Lachish, one. The king of Aglon, one. The king of Gezer, one. The king of Debir, one. The king of Gader, one. The king of Harma, one. The king of Arad, one. The king of Libna, one the king of Adlam, one, the king of Makta, one, the king of Bethel, one, the king of Thaphak, one, the king of Kephir, one, the king of Aphak, one, the king of Lashran, one, the king of Madon, one, the king of Katzer, one, the king of Shimron Miram, one, the king of Akshaph, one, the king of Anak, one, the king of Megiddo, one, the king of Kadesh, one, the king of Yachnan in Carmel, one, the king of Dor in Naphoth-Dor, one, the king of the nations in Gilgal, one, the king of Thirzah, one. All the kings were thirty-one. The end of chapters 7 through 12 of the Book of Joshua. Recording by Mark Penfold.